do you always need the Swedish gold and is it worth the extra 1,500 euros? That's what Vauli and I thought about the Kawasaki Z900 SE and to be able to compare it, we also have a standard model with us. We will compare the two of them. Who should go for the more expensive model? We'll find out. Yeah, Vauli, Kawasaki Z900 SE versus Z900 Standard. Both of them are not new models now. And so when we had them in the yard, we said we've never actually compared them before. It's actually unbelievable. Yes, um, so I have to admit, I don't know if I'm allowed to anticipate that now. The differences aren't that big, but um, you noticed it while riding. And yes, for me personally, it's the same engine on both and the engine makes the bike. So Kawasaki with the Z900 models, there's still a real motorcycle in there. It is all about the engine, about this pure four cylinder that is inside, where I noticed once again that it is a bit wider. You have to give the knuckles a wide space. It is still a real pure four cylinder. All other manufacturers are already moving in the direction of parallel two cylinder. And even three cylinder engines are now widely available and Kawasaki is sticking with the four cylinder, which I find very disappointing. And how do you like the engine? You are a classic. We have, I just counted today, we currently have four Z900 in our 1000 PS yard, two of our tuning projects, one standard, one SE, and now these brand new test bikes from Kawasaki. Um, it's just always a great experience to ride this Z900. As you say, this engine, it's so full of character. It's really powerful. I mean, we're still talking about 125 horsepower. 125.4 at nine and a half thousand revs. We have in the list, Kawasaki is very accurate there, also with the torque 98.6 at 7,700 revs is half the truth for me because 7,700 is quite high up. What's under that? Well, there's a lot below that. It's one of those bikes, both of them, because they both have the same engine in them. It's the kind of engine where I say, if you're close to the idle speed in sixth gear, strolling through the city is no problem at all. People who have some kind of jerky two-cylinder engine can only dream of that below 3000 RPM. So that really is the dream. Where can I now switch to the comparison? I want to mention briefly, because I also have to think about um, the exhaust. I've just seen that we have the um, Akrapovic slip-on on both models. That's because we have the performance package on each of them, which includes the Akrapovic slip on the seat cover, a small windshield and a tank pad. I just wanted to add that. Uh, costs extra, of course. Um, what I wanted to say is that the engines are the same on both. I, I think that's a bit of a shame. Maybe that's a stupid word, but I'm a bit surprised about it because other manufacturers do it a bit smarter, I think, um, by giving the top version, in this case, the SE, a bit more power. Although you also have to say that these models lose a bit of torque in the lower range, of course, if I get more power out of the same engine, but that's also a bit smarter. That's also a bit smarter if I get more power out of the other engine. If I get more power out of the other engine, then I have to make a bit of a sacrifice elsewhere, which you probably wouldn't mind, so I wouldn't advise at all in the next models when the 900 is refreshed or comes new that the SE version is perhaps a bit stronger because in that case, they are exactly the same now. Quick shifter wouldn't be a bad thing either. God, yes, of course, that's insane. The old topic, which we've been criticizing a lot in the meantime, and if someone still says today, please give us this newfangled stuff, quick shifter up, down, then it's already so that you can get a bit more power out of it. Who needs that? It's very great. And it really disturbs the very sporty approach to riding a motorcycle. Sporty, yes, that's actually where the differences lies. We have, should I? Just or don't say another word. I always thought, Volley talks anyway, he talks forever, I can lean back. I'll take a step back now, okay. So, the Z900 SE. As you can easily see, we have a high quality suspension inside. An Erlins shock absorber at the rear and a reworked fork at the front. Now also anodized gold. I think it looks really nice and, above all, matches the Erlins look. 
what else do we have? We have an upgraded brake system at the front Brembo 4 piston and the the M432. Exactly, thank you, that's it. Steel flex, steel flex hoses included. I also have to say something about the suspension. Both are identical in terms of adjustability, so front and rear rebound and spring preload. And I have to say, at the beginning, we thought on the data sheet, yes, it will be a bit sportier, but when you actually ride it, you notice clear differences when you first get on it, because the seat height has increased significantly uh, thanks to this Olin shock absorber. From the standard, we have 795 millimeters, and now we are already at 820 millimeters on the SE. And uh, I mean, with my 1.75 meters, I get down well on the SE, but I can already feel when I sit on it, my butt is higher. I have more pressure on the handlebars, and it wants to suggest to me, even before I set off, hey, I'm sportio. Yeah, but then again, for me, I, when I was riding always relatively bad road steps, I didn't even notice that much more sensitive response. And um, the fork, I would say, if Kawasaki say they've upgraded it, I'm happy to believe them, but I'm sorry, it's not necessarily such a dramatic difference in terms of performance that it's worth the extra cost to me. So that's what I'm saying. But if someone wants purely the performance of the better material, but also perhaps the rental wall, well, it's a friendly look because an oil in the shock with the yellow spring and the golden suspension, um, a very prominently placed expansion tank or adjustment wheel, that's uh, of course uh, great and a golden fork, as you said at the beginning, that makes a visual impression. And with other manufacturers, I say some additions that don't have any differences also cost more because the paintwork is nicer or because there's something on it that's more bling bling. So Kawasaki does a bit more bling bling with this version. Uh, and I think it's good. I like it. Yes, of course, I agree. So on the country road, if you're riding, uh, let's say, relaxed and sporty like we are today, then you won't notice it. But we've often been on track days with, in quotation marks, our Z900 SE and then it can really play to its strengths that you can adjust this fine suspension a little and configure it to your wishes. That's where it will come more into its own than on the road today. But what I did notice right from the first bend was the tires. We have the Dunlop Road Sport 2 on the standard and on the SE we have the Bridgestone S22 on it and there you can already notice probably also in combination with this adapted ergonomics that the SE is already much sharper into the curve. It almost fell into the corner on its own, whereas on the standard version, I felt more like, yes, I have a big four cylinder naked bike under me. I have to work a bit harder. I also have to admit that the S22, which sells itself so and so, and that it's on here, I think it's great because it's a sportier tire than the Dunlop, but it still does everything well. It's good in the wet. Um, it's just so sporty in terms of the contour. In terms of handling, I think the SE version was the better, the sportier one. So the tire is almost what I find most important about the SE version, that it's the other one. And yes, as I said, I've already mentioned the look and the Akrapovich exhaust. So in terms of sound, a four-cylinder is also very appealing. You think it's almost a bit anti-social, don't you? Well, I was standing there at one point when you were doing the tracking shot and I, I'm just waiting there, standing there, and you come blowing down the straight at a legal speed, of course, and the four cylinder just goes, wah, bah, bah, and then you downshift, wah, na, 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 na. So you really went for it and behaved the way I imagine someone on a motorcycle like that would behave, and quite conspicuously at that in keeping with the Sugomi look, which you either like or don't like. Now, what I find interesting, because you already mentioned the looks, uh, Kawasaki talks about giving the SE version a different paint job that it should somehow be prettier. I'll leave it at that because they, they look extremely similar. But the green rims on the normal ones, listen, you should have done that on the SE. They really make a statement, bah, well, but I really like them. And the green frame. And the green frame, so visually, it's, it's almost more striking, but I have to be honest, I mean, if any of you have um, colored rims out there, uh, please post in the comments if it's really that bad but um, I know I'd be too lazy to clean the rims. So they would probably look so good for the first 500 kilometers until I get out in the rain once and it gets really dirty, then I wouldn't want it anymore. Whether such green rims actually look really dirty, then I don't know if they get so dirty that you can see it that much. Yeah, I don't know. Feel free to write it in our comments under the video. Uh, also, if you agree with us, if you might have them, share the video with people who have these, one of these bikes or both anyway, you never know. Uh, because in terms of price, 
you have to say nothing is cheap anymore. But they are so cheap that you could actually get both um, at the same time. You've already mentioned it, 1,500 euro difference. Of course, everyone has to decide for themselves. But we also compared both with competitors and both Kawasaki's were always the cheapest, certainly in Austria. I think in Austria, Germany and Switzerland, the normal one is the cheapest compared with the Yamaha MT-09, the Duke 890, Triumph Street Triple, and all the usual suspects, of which there are also their RSR, SB versions, and here, the SE, and that was also the cheapest in comparison. Okay, you could say that a quick shifter would be nice, but those of you who argue that I don't need it because the gearbox is basically very sharp, so it works well, it's just that having to shift up is strange, we're almost not used to it anymore. And what we also just don't have on board on either of them is also already noticeable compared to the competition. We don't have any safety systems that work depending on the lean angle. No IMU, we have traction control, three-way adjustable and can be switched off. We have power modes, we have sport, road, rain and a custom rider. Yes, and we have ABS, but none of that is lean angle dependent, so you have to make compromises because they've both been around for a while. The cycle at Kawasaki is obviously coming to an end soon, but who knows what they'll do later. Maybe they'll suddenly come out with a parallel two-cylinder or a three-cylinder. So if you want a real borrowed four-cylinder with 948 cubic centimeter, if I'm not mistaken, there's nothing wrong with considering the Z900, whether normal or SE. So to summarize, we were wondering, is it worth the 1,500 euro, I think? If you do a lot of track riding and you really want the best that Kawa has uh, to offer with three and four cylinders, then definitely SE. But um, for me personally and the two of us as street riders, I think the standard versions are enough. Yes, that, that already from a riding point of view. But just if I want the looks and Erlins is always a prestige thing to order, then I think it won't get any cheaper than that. You have a nice golden fork and Erlins shock absorber. Yeah. We thank you for watching and listening. Exactly. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time. Subscribe to our channel. Thumbs up and see Bye. you at the next video.